Agribusiness holds the key to transforming and freeing Uganda from where it is economically to where it wants to be. That's the middle income status. To those that sit in this particular subsector, the country has a lot of potential in this area and indeed some strides have already been made. For instance, the dairy subsector. We talked to one of the partners who has invested heavily in this space to pick their minds on this. All right, Josephine, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, Man and Markets. You're most welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, for starters, you lead an institution that is quite critical to the development of the agribusiness subsector in this country. Um, how would you rate the performance of the agribusiness subsector in this country, your assessment? Indeed, um, agribusiness is, has huge potential, uh, but the challenges are also immense. So in a, in a year, we have the drought going very much against us, and the subsequent one, the rains then come against us. However, our uh, effort in the sector is to see that we iron out, that we support the ironing out of these exceptional circumstances by working with agribusinesses to ensure that our farmers are more resilient. Because when they, they go through a drought spell, they are our main supply. They, they are our main supply in all the businesses that um, follow through in the value chain. And they will get discouraged. And, um, and then on the other hand, if they get through a, 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 a now a very heavy rainy season, they'll still get um, uh, challenges and get discouraged. But um, how do we then uh, support to make them more resilient in light of these spikes from both sides. So one of the focus areas that now we have at ABI is to, is to look at the, the green growth. And green growth is generally looking at the effect of climatic changes and how they are impacting not just the farmers but the entire value chain. Now I know for the fact that ABI is pursuing a vision that prioritizes profitability and competitiveness. What model are you using, you know, to attain this vision? The model, um, uh, first of all, because of the limitation of resources, we look at varied subsectors at a time. And the choice of those subsectors is linked or aligned to the government objectives. So if then in the, we will look at all the major government documentation that has been published, like, like the development plan, and then therein source the subsectors of focus as well. So out of that, we've highlighted six at the moment. In the current business plan, we are proposing that we will also add an additional two. And in light, the, the, the criteria that we use to choose these indeed is alignment to the national development plan, but also um, how impactful that subsector can be, not just for the agribusinesses, but also the smallholder farmer. Now, let's look at the contribution of ABI in the growth and development of Uganda's agribusiness subsector. I mean, looking at the financial markets, areas of production and competitiveness. What has been your contribution in that area? We've identified the dairy subsector as one of the six I've mentioned, and we've assigned um, a couple of funding windows. And what do we mean by funding windows? One was held this year, the first one, where we engaged varied stakeholders, key stakeholders in dairy, identified the issues on the back of a study that we had actually done in, in 2017. We identified those key issues. We also looked back at all the interventions we'd done in the period 2014 to 2018, which comprised of a lot of infrastructure development. So when we engaged the key stakeholders again from all walks of life, including private sector, we actually saw the changing landscape in terms of the challenges of the acaricides, for instance. So when we made this particular funding window, which is uh, premised on the information that we've put together from past experience, from the key stakeholders, from surveys, we were able to invite anybody out there in the market, any agribusiness, who had an intention to grow in profitability, to grow in revenue, and could work with us to address these, these issues as had been identified. So that particular call went through, out of which we've identified uh, in, in the first year four players to work with. And subsequently, 
over the, in, within these five years, we are going to make another call. Of course, when we make this call, that particular project will go on for the next three to four years. But within that period, then we'll make a subsequent one to actually see how much more we can do in the sector, subsector. Mm. Now, a number of our financial institutions are risk averse when it comes to financing agriculture or agribusiness in general. Now, what are you doing as an entity that is keen on supporting this sector to grow the appetite of financials towards agriculture or agribusiness? We still maintain uh, the instruments of um, availing liquidity where required. So for some institutions, it's, it's, it's the matching of, 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 of liquidity requirements that um, if the facility required is a, is a medium term or long term um, loan for the agribusiness, I need as a financial institution to source financing which can be matched in the same tenure because I can't collect savings over a month and I deploy them into a two-year facility. So we avail financing to financial institutions of up to five years, or even we can consider more where need arises so that they can be able to match. And we try to make it as affordable as possible to ensure not just their profitability, but ours as well. At the same time, we offer the de-risking instrument of a guarantee scheme in event uh, of, of, of a lack of collateral. So the other um, uh, the other dimensions that, the, the, that are appraised by a financial institution to make good credit should be sound enough but for uh, collateral because as we all know, small and medium enterprises are usually not having all these assets available to, to, to bring to financial institutions to access the level of financing they need for their businesses to grow. So these instruments are given directly to the financial institutions. The enterprises don't need to know. We do not want to cause a moral hazard. And out of that, then we've seen growth in, in those particular products. Well, on that note, um, 2020 is here. And uh, what are some of the areas or some of the boxes that you feel you've been able to tick in the concluding financial year or 2019? there was a survey done for the beneficiary, the, 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 the small businesses, the small enterprises that borrowed from the financial institutions. So you'd uh, have teams go out there and ascertain from them that when you received this loan from financial institution XYZ, what did you use it for? How did it help you? Yes, and, and the information coming from that particular angle as well was quite positive, yes. The majority of the interviewees demonstrated that they had actually been able to access inputs that they would not have ordinarily accessed, to access uh, equipment that they would ordinarily not have accessed, to have good timing for their seasons, and that they had seen growth in their small and, and medium enterprises. Now, how are you positioned as an organization to drive the dairy subsector, let's say, over the next five years? We want to be very strong with the projects of dairy we've identified and we are now, um, we rolled out uh, uh, a number of them in Q4 of 2019 but we are going to see the actual work come through and the actual reporting of what they are really laying down, be it equipment, be it um, practices that they are going to change in terms of how they work, we'll actually see a lot of that in 2020. would like to participate more with forum of, of in the dairy sub, uh, sub, 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 sub sector, so that we can actually garner more information that informs how we work smarter, how we work better. We want to look at technology in terms of how we actually monitor our results. We are looking at specific apps on, on the phones uh, as, from the beneficiary farmers, beneficiary livestock holders. We, in the livestock face, uh, space, want to look at uh, also uh, following through the findings of the World Bank report of August 2019, where they indicated that some form of technology could be required to get insurance coverage, reach more of the small livestock farmers. So in their review, they noted that the bigger ranchers, the bigger livestock holders, or medium and bigger, could easily access uh, the insurance. But they felt that where the bulk or the majority of the people were, uh, they were not quite, it was not quite as easy. And they recommended that we could actually, as stakeholders, in the industry look more at how can technology play a role in this and, and that that is one of the aspects we want to explore from the financing space yeah <laughs> the pleasure is all mine thank you yes